Hello everybody, how do you do? In this exercise, you can learn to program dynamic thumbnail image cycling programs where the pictures automatically cycle as the user places their mouse over a preview image. And this sort of program can be used to cycle through a collection of video thumbnail images or to cycle through products in an online store if the uh, store allows multiple images for each product. And it's becoming very popular functionality for video thumbnails or product images and things like that. And the application that you see right here is the finished product of what you're going to be learning how to program in this video tutorial. So follow along with me, my friend. Okay, all right, let's go. Okay, we're going to begin with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. Mine is named example.html. Now let's start with the HTML content that we're going to put in the body element. And that's just going to be one line. It's going to be one div element with an ID of items container. And everything's going to be dynamically put in that container through script. So if you've never rendered HTML content through JavaScript dynamically, this will be a good tutorial for you. Now let's move along to the CSS portion of the document. And let's put in all the CSS needed for the page. So you can see this rule is targeting anything that has a class of item. And then this rule is targeting any image elements that are children of the item element. And then any span elements that we put inside of that item box is going to get these properties. It's very simple. So let's go ahead and collapse the CSS. We don't need to look at it anymore. Now the rest is JavaScript. Now you can either choose to put your script here under the items container or you can just put it into the window load event. So what we'll do is put window.addEventListener and for the first parameter we're going to put the event we want to listen for which is the load event. Then the second parameter which is our listener code we'll just put a generic function here. Open close parentheses, open in curly brace, go down a few lines and close in curly brace. So now you have a little function nest inside of your code portion of your event listener. Now anything you want to happen in the load event just gets put here inside of the function. Like I said, if you don't want to use the window load event, you can put your script here under the items container. Just as long as the items container is loaded before the script runs. Okay, the first thing we're going to do inside of our load event is create an object reference for the items container. And we're doing that so we can append child. We'll use the append child method we're going to sync dynamic elements into it. Now we're going to create a couple of variables. We're just going to initialize a couple of variables that our program is going to require. The first one is named thumb timer and that's going to represent the set interval method when we call it to run. TI variable stands for timer index and this number will be incremented and then set back to zero to create the cycling effect. Now the DIR variable that's going to be the directory for your images. Mine just happened to be in a folder called item images and then forward slash. Okay, so now the next three lines are going to be JSON objects. And I did a very long tutorial series. It's a whole bunch of videos on how to program JSON data structures. So if you're looking at this data structure and you're saying, what the hell is he doing there? All you have to do is learn JSON. And I have a whole bunch of video tutorials about JSON programming for beginners. So here's object 1, object 2, and object 3. Now if you look at the JSON object, you'll see that it's nothing more than an associative array. It allows you to put key value pairs. And I have two sets of data in each object. The name data, which has a value of pistol for this one, glasses for this one, and box for this one. Then we also have another piece of data which is an array and the key is picks. So the array key is picks and then the array data is simply put after the colon. And you can see the pistol has three JPEG images associated with it and the box has four JPEG images associated with it. Now you can also get this data from the server using Ajax requests and then process it in as JSON objects which we discussed in all of those video tutorials. We showed how to access MySQL databases, get the information out of the database as JSON data structure, and send it back to our JavaScript program where JavaScript can decode 
the JSON and make it into arrays that you can just loop over. We explained all of that stuff in the JSON programming videos. Now another thing I want to mention about these JSON objects, you can see I have two pieces of data in each object, name and picks. You can go ahead and add another piece of data if you just put a comma here and say you want to put price colon and then in a string or as a number you can put the price so you can say 599 or you can put it into a string like that. I would just leave it as a string encapsulated in quotes so each one of these objects could be given a price and in the loop I'm going to show you how to grab all of those pieces of data within the objects. So after all of the objects are in place I'm going to create an array to hold all three of those objects. So this is just a basic array and in that array there are three JSON objects. Now I'm going to loop over that array and then I'll be able to have access to all of those objects and all the data within them. So we say var i equals zero while i is less than array dot length we're going to i plus plus. So this uh, for loop will keep running. It, this for loop will run for as many items as there are in this array. So this for loop is set up to run three times. One, two, three. And it starts with an index of zero and all arrays have an index of zero. So this array has index zero, one, two. But there's three items in it. And that's why we put the data into an array. That way we can easily loop over it. Now within this loop, we want to start setting up dynamic elements that are going to be placed into this items container as children. So the first thing we do in the for loop is we set up those create element methods for div, image, and span. So basically all you're doing here is dynamically creating a div, dynamically creating an image element, and dynamically creating a span element. So remember this div is going to be the parent container for this image and this span. Now each of these divs we want to give the item class to it. So as each div is dynamically created we give it dot class name equals item. That makes it connected to the CSS rule for item. That way right when it's put on the page it has all of the the look that we want. Now we're going to reference the image and what you can do in HTML5 is make custom attributes. So I'm making a custom property or attribute here and it's called OI which is object index. And I just want to keep track of which object this is in the array. So in the first time this loop runs we're going to have object index of zero. The second time the loop runs this I is going to be a one and so on and so forth as they come pouring out. And I'm using this that way I can easily target the array element that I need to get all of the data that I want when the mouse over event takes place. So when the mouse over and mouse out events take place we just have to have a way of keeping track of which index this object is in the array. Okay now we're going to actually put the first image in place. So you see for the pistol we have pistol a.jpg is the first image for the glasses, we have glasses a.jpg is the first image. And these can have any naming conventions that you want. They don't have to be named A, B, C, D like the way mine are here. They can have any names. These image files on your server could have any name. Okay, so for the image, we're going to set its source attribute now. And that's what actually puts an image to render into the image element. We put the directory, which in our case was item images forward slash. So the directory goes there. And then we append to that string the array i index. Then we go into the picks data. Goes into the array and it references the object for which is coming through the loop. Then it goes into that object's picks data and it gets the first element. Zero is always the first element in array. So you go into object one, picks data is right here. And here's the array. So you have the picks data array right there. First element in it is pistol a.jpg. So you're going picks zero index is getting the first image in that data array. And this line is what puts the image, the default first image into the image element. 
then we're going to need a span element. And the span element is just going to hold the name uh, attribute or the name value. So for the first div that comes out, it's going to be for the pistol. So you're going to see pistol written under the picture. Now we do that by saying this the dynamic span element that we, we created right here gets inner HTML property equal to the array index dot name. So whichever object is coming through this for loop, we get its dot name property. Now put the div that we created here into the items container, which is this div actually sitting on the page. So we use the append child method to do that. We use the append child method to put that div that we just created dynamically into the items container on the page. Now immediately directly after that, we're going to use append child two more times to put the image into the div and the span element into the div. So here the div was put into the items container and then we put image into that div and then span into that div. And here you can put any other magic dynamic elements that you want to put in. Like I said, buy now buttons, links, whatever. Now for each of the image elements, since we want the, when the user's mouse goes over the image, we want a cycle program to initiate. We have to have mouse over and mouse out event listeners added to that image. So we say image dot add event listener. The event type is mouse over for the first one. Then we put comma and then our code that we want to execute upon that event. And I'm going to change this out for a generic function in just a moment. But what you can do is copy that line, go down and paste it in and then just change the VER to UT and you have your mouse out event ready to go for that image. Because when the user's mouse goes over, mouse is over the image, we want to start the program up to cycle images. Then when the user's mouse goes out away, then we want to stop the program from image cycling. That's why we have these two listeners in place. Now, like I said, we're going to use generic functions in place of where we just put the, the word code. I'll highlight the word code and I'm going to add my function now. You can see here is the function that I just put into place where the word code was. Everything that you see blue is what I just added where the word code was. And you can see it's a generic function. Function, it references the event. And you can see it closes right here with this curly brace. All right. So what happens is in that function, we reference the event as an argument. That way we can easily get access to, to know which exact picture the user's mouse is over. And that's very important. So with anywhere within this function, we can reference event dot target. And that gives you access to the element that is causing this mouse over event listener to fire off. So it's a, it's a dynamic way to get access to the element that the user's mouse happens to be over. Okay, so the first thing we do in this generic function is we set the thumb timer using the set interval method. Now the set interval method gets any kind of code you want. And you can see my first argument is the code. And then my second argument is the amount of time, the interval, that's 7 tenths of a second, 700 milliseconds. So if you wanted that to be one second, you just make that 1000 milliseconds. So every seven tenths of a second, just a little bit faster than a second, all of this code right here executes. Actually, this status element doesn't need to be there. That was just while I was testing. So the generic function inside of the set interval method is going to keep firing off every seven tenths of a second. So all this code executes that quickly. So what we do first is we take the timer index and we say plus plus to make it increment. Remember it starts at zero here. So we make it increment here. So it goes from zero to one. And the next time the interval fires off, this TI is going to be a two and so on and so forth. So we say if the timer index is equal to the array event dot target object index dot picks dot length. So what you're doing is you're going into that object and you're checking to see how many array elements, how many images are in its collection for its little thumbnails. And that's what you're getting here in this number. Okay. 
So you're saying if the timer index is equal to the amount of images in the array, then you want to make sure you put the timer index back to zero. So you target the first array item again. And basically that's what helps you loop over these arrays. So it starts at this one, then it goes to this picture, this picture, this picture. And then since there's no more pictures in the array, it's set to go back to the first picture. So it loops the cycle. And that's what this code accomplishes. This little if condition that you see. Now finally, directly after that if condition that we're checking to see if we need to take it back to the zero picture first, directly after that if condition, we say event.target.source. So the source string is going to be the directory, which is item images forward slash. Then we target the object index in the array. Now for that object, we get the picks data and we're going to get the timer index. We're going to use that to reference which picture should be put into the source attribute. So this TI, it just keeps incrementing until it reaches the last number within the array for that item. It, it's basically how you loop through this array of images. That timer index keeps incrementing here and you don't, you just don't want it to get to be too high to where it, it will be referencing null images. So you make it go back to zero if it happens to get to the end of the array. Now we want to put a generic function in place for the mouse out event listener. So our listener code for the mouse out event is going to be this. So I have a generic function that I just replaced the word code with. You can see that is all highlighted in blue. Now in this mouse out event, we also reference the event as an argument passed through the function. First line within the mouse out event is we clear the thumb timer. That stops the timer and there's going to be no more cycling when the mouse leaves the image. Then we make the timer index go back to zero because when the user goes back over the image, it can start from the beginning again. Or if it goes to a new image, it'll start from the beginning. They put their mouse over a new product or whatever. Then the last thing in the mouse out is you want to set the image back to the default image for that product. So since TI is reset to zero here, you can just use TI here to fetch the first image for that object. So this line just puts the first default image back into place for whichever image they moused out of. Now let's see if we have a working application. Let's test this in our favorite browser. All right. So you can see my mouse goes over the pistol and it's cycling through all the pistol pictures. There's three of them. There's also three pictures for the glasses. And there's four pictures for the box. So that shows you, you can have any amount of pictures. Let's say your pistol had 20 different pictures. You can just list them all right in here in the array. And this, all of this data, remember this, all of this data could get dynamically rendered into these objects through database queries. So you can actually query a database, then use a server side language to structure all of that data coming out of the database as JSON which those videos that I made a long time ago, it explains all that. Okay, one final look, and we'll call it quits. As you can see, it has simple good functionality. When the mouse goes away, it goes back to the original image that's supposed to be there as the default image. Okay. Now, this program can work in so many different ways. When I was writing it, there was... I did it in 10 different ways, basically. So there's so many different ways you can skin this cat. Uh, but basically, the logic is when the user's mouse goes over the thing, you want to cycle some images in that element until their mouse leaves it. That's the fundamental logic. But there's so many different ways to go about it with JavaScript. I'll tell you, the script you see here just happens to be what I refined, I refined it using JSON objects. But when I first wrote the script and everything worked, I didn't use JSON objects. I had actual elements down in the page. So you could have all of your elements in the items container hard coded in. You can have all those divs with the images and the spans in the HTML. 
You don't have to have JSON objects or database data rendering all of these divs to the page. They can, you can actually hard code them into the items container or anywhere you want on the page. But this just shows you a way to maybe, you know, use data that is structured as JSON. That way you can use database queries to get dynamic data from the database and nothing has to be hard coded. All right, so if you have any questions or concerns, please leave your comment below. Bye-bye.